Welcome everyone to the fifth Sunday of Lent. This is Father Philip here at Holy Family Catholic Church. Thank you for joining us. Today we hear the story of Lazarus. Jesus told Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. So often, we experience different types of death in our daily living. We're going to hear from one of our parishioners, David Moss, today, in terms of his journey back to life. Thank you so much. God bless. Hello, my name's Dave Moss. I've been a parishioner here at Holy Family for about seven years and a Catholic for about six. And um, I was pretty humbled when I got an email from John wanting me to speak a little bit about my story and uh, how it pertains with Lazarus' story in our gospel. And um, as I read through and reflected on the gospel with Lazarus and Mary and Martha, a few things really stood out to me, and, and I can relate to them a lot. And how God and Jesus over always, always seems to exceed expectations of what we're even capable with in the worldly manner. You know, he loved Lazarus and Mary and Martha. When he got word that he was going to, that he was sick and going to fall asleep, his disciples thought that he was sleeping, and Jesus had to tell them, no, he's dying. And um, he waited for a day or two, and when he decided to go back, the disciples reminded him that, you know, they wanted to stone you when you were there last time. And he knew that he was called and he had to go. And the example of his faith in the Father to truly go back and face and knowing that God had his best intentions and, and will and to be able to follow that will is a great example for us. And then Mary and Martha both made comments when they come out to meet Jesus about how if had you been here, he might not have died. And that's where he expects expectations. He comes with overbounding mercy and love and just says, walk Lazarus, and he walks out of the grave. And a true example of how we underestimate his will in our life and what he can do for us. And our journey and my journey can relate to that. When I was young, I was born and raised in the Lutheran church. And I could, I could quote the parables and, and had a lot of memorized Bible verses. And uh, just never really had a connection with God and how he works in my life. And I went down a path. And um, I was using a lot of drugs and alcohol. Ended up in a treatment center. And God continues to put people in my life that guide me. And if I'm open to that guidance. And I got introduced to a, a program and a set of steps that guided me back to faith. And I started to, I was powerless over this world. And then I, I had to believe that, I came to believe that God could restore me to sanity and let me find peace. And on that journey, I have to turn my will and my life over to the care of God as I understand Him. And then I have to clean up the wreckage of the past, and I have to forgive, 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 as the gospel tells us to do. I can't carry resentment. And then I have to look at my role in those resentments and, and, and my actions and clean up the past and right the wrongs that I can right without creating more wrongs. And then continue to live a life where I'm continuing to grow and learn and self-reflect and correct wrongs and continue to pray for God's will in my life and the courage and power to carry that out and then carry the message to others and evangelize. And I can evangelize today. A lot of my daily prayers is to let God's light in me shine where he wants it to shine. If I've truly turned my will in my life over the care of God, I got nothing to worry about. I know I take that back. I live in a world I have free will, and I continue to want to work on that and grow. But God continues to put people on my life 
he brought brought me to Holy Family through some sorrow, really. Um, we had a dear friend dying of cancer, and we were goddaughters to their children, or godparents to their children. And they continued. They said, "Hey, you ought to try this." I, I tried Holy Family. I'd been going to Catholic Church with my wife for over, almost 25 years. We came here, and I started hearing phrases like, Come on, Holy Spirit, after the Gospel reading. So, how does this apply to our life? And I really started relating that to the journey that I'd been on during my life in recovery. And uh, it was kind of funny one day that Mary asked me if I'd got some chores done. I said, no, but I called the church and got signed up for RCIA. And um, I'm so glad I did and so blessed that I did. And I continue to have people brought into my life today and being active in the church and getting to know people here and not only share the message in, in the group here at the church, but being able to carry that message outside of the halls. and out into the world and in my daily life and try to be a light in this world that God wants me to be. And I know I take my will back from time to time, but I can take pause now and say a quick little prayer, come on Holy Spirit, and see how it guides me forward. And um, continue to practice that. And I know he's not done with me yet, and I'm looking forward to the person I'm gonna be, because I'm not, I, don't, I still don't think I'm the person he wants me to be yet. I keep doing the basic things, practicing the principles that I'm taught here, and continue to live my life in a manner that continues to bring glory and praise to His name, and hopefully help a few others along the way. So that's my story. That's what I got. Bye.